How's it going everybody? It's Derek and uh, I'm back with another video and in this video we're going to be talking about Veracrypt and how you can create encrypted volumes. So to start off, uh, you're going to need to install the Veracrypt software. The Veracrypt software, uh, we've got all the details on that down below in the description. Please check out my article and uh, go through it and you'll be able to get it working just fine. Okay, so to start off, we're going to be making a new volume. So we'll need to go up here in the software and click Create New Volume. So as you can see, there are two options. There's Create a Volume Within a Partition. We're not focusing on this because this is best for inexperienced users, and it's just more convenient. Even, even if uh, you can set up a volume within a partition and a drive, it takes a while, and uh, I just like this version better. So to start off, uh, like I said, go in here, open up the Create Volume Wizard, and then what you need to do is you need to open up your file manager. I'm in my home folder, and uh, I'm using Nemo, which is part of the Cinnamon desktop environment. If you use Nautilus, or uh, Nautilus is about the same as Nemo, it's a fork, so it's the same code with different stuff. If you use KDE, this will be a little bit different. If you use Thunar and uh, XFCE, or if you use PC Man FM on LXDE, it'll be a little bit different. I can't account for every single file manager, and hopefully you guys know that. But the basic concept is you need to create a blank file, and this blank file is going to be how you encrypt your container. So in Nemo, I'm going to do a right click, and I'm going to do Create New Document. So your file manager, like I said, may be different, but what you need to do is you need to just right click on an empty space and look for something similar to empty document, empty text file, empty file, whatever you can do to create an empty file. If you have to go into the text editor and uh, go like this and go to the home and click uh, empty file, so be it. If you can't do it with file manager, you'll have to do it that way. But uh, I can do it directly with the file manager, so I'm going to. And uh, all I do is click right click and then empty document. And then I name this encrypt. I suck at spelling. Let's just call it lock container. Press enter. And uh, this is our encrypted file starting point. So now we can just go back here and then we click the next button. And uh, so now this goes through and it says that there are two different types of volumes. The first volume is what they recommend, which is the standard volume. And this is what we're gonna choose. If you wanna choose something a little bit more complicated where you have a hidden volume with a, a password, a, a whole bunch of security stuff. If you're like in trouble with the CIA or something, I guess you can pick this option. But for normal people, this option is, is good enough. Click the next button to move on, and then you need to find the file that you just created. And in my case, it's the lock-container file in my home folder. Yours may be different depending on where you save it, but once you do that, just click the save button. And then keep in mind that the app is going to tell you that a file named lock container already exists. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna replace the empty file that you just made. So click the replace button and uh, then click next. So now we look through the encryption. So by default, the encryption is AES, but there are tons of different options. For the sake of demonstration, I'm just going with the default. And uh, the hash algorithm, again, I'm just going with what they select by default because, you know, this is just a demonstration. But if I was like trying to do military grade stuff, I probably would read into each one of these, you know, if I was like 007 or something. I would read into each one of these hashing algorithms and encryption algorithms, and I would try and figure out which one is best for my needs. And I recommend that you do that as well. And they even have an information thing here for each of the different ones. But once you figure all this out, just click the next button. And now it's time to figure out how big the volume size should be. So you can go in megabytes, or you can go in gigabytes or kilobytes. So because I don't want it, this to take too long, I'm going to just say 500 megabytes. But say you need a huge uh, encryption file, you could do one gigabyte, you could do 100, you could even do 512 kilobits. Like, it doesn't matter. 
my case, I'm just going to say 500 and then I will click the next to move on. So for passwords, in the article, I explain why you should use the strong password generator website to create a super secure password. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm just going to enter a common password that I use on my LAN. And uh, I'm going to confirm it. And uh, you can also use a key file if you know what that is. If, if not, don't even worry about it. You can also use PIM, once again, if you know what that means. If not, don't worry about it. Be sure to read the instructions for best password cases. And once you've settled on your password, click the next button to continue. So of course, because I'm using a short password, it's telling me that this is a warning. I am doing this because this is a demonstration. This is not for my security, so I'm going to ignore it. But you should not ignore this warning. Do not ignore this warning because it'll basically defeat the purpose of encryption. But once you're ready to go, you know, we need to f move on to the next page, and this involves us picking the file system. So they generally recommend you use FAT, and I would say to keep it this way. If you must have a different file system, you can use NTFS if you plan on using this on Windows. If you plan on just keeping it on Linux, you can keep it as this EXFAT if you need it on devices that support that. But FAT is pretty universal. It'll, you, it'll work on Macs and everything, BSD. So this is probably a good option to just go with that. Unless you, like I said, unless you specifically have needs for these, stick with this one and then click to the next button. And uh, so the next step is actually really interesting. It's going to go and randomize everything. And what you need to do is you need to move your mouse around like I'm doing here until this bar fills up 100% of the way. Now this is because the more you move it, the more the cryptographically, uh, the more the cryptographic hash algorithm can randomize everything that's going on with the encryption. If you're only securing some personal tax files or something, you can decide how much randomness you want to do. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I have a weird uh, way about things where I need to fill out this thing 100% because it just looks weird if I don't. But it's all up to you. Just make sure that you fill it out and figure it out. And then once the randomness is collected, you just click the format button. And it'll also, uh, like before, it'll tell you that the lock file is already there. Just ignore it and uh, it will make a new one. And uh, Veracrypt will format the lock file. And the lock container, the volume will be successfully created. And uh, if you want to create more, you can click next to go on out of the way. Otherwise, just click the exit button and we can now access our Veracrypt stuff. So how do we do that? To access Veracrypt stuff, you go over here and you click mount. And if you just click mount, nothing happens. So what you need to do is you need to select a slot. I'm going to select slot one and then I click the mount button. And of course, hey, uh, editor, cut those last two tries out. I'm going to do it one more time. OK, so to mount these, what you'd need to do is click Select File, select your lock container, click Open, select a slot, click Mount. And then you would enter your password. In my case, it's my simple password. You, if you're using a key file, you may need to select this box and then find this find the uh, key file. If you got some true crypt options, you need to check this box. And if you use PIM, you need to check this and, and all this other stuff. Once you've got that, click the OK button and then enter your system password. This is different than your Veracrypt volume password. This is the password that you use day to day on Linux. And then you add that. So now, as you can see, the volume is mounted in MNT Veracrypt 1. So if I open up my terminal and I do an lsblk, I know that my volume is mounted here. And I can do cd here. And I can add a folder if I want to. So mkdir test. I could also go to my file manager and uh, go into pictures or I don't have anything in pictures. Uh, let's see. I don't really have anything on this computer. 
Okay, let's copy C file. And then if I go to MNT, I see my Veracrypt file, file right here. There's my test folder. I can also put my C file server thing here. And uh, once I've got my data, my super secret data, I can go here, click uh, dismount all. But uh, if you click dismount all, like you'll see right here, if I have a terminal open or if I'm currently in the device itself, you can't you can't exit. So what you need to do is you need to exit any and all interaction with it, and then click dismount, and then we go back here, and we see the lock container is completely. It's got stuff in it, but no one can access it. I can't go back to MNT. It's not there and everything is gone, everything is secure. And if I ever want to access my data again, like I said, select the file, go here, click mount, enter the password, enter the system password, and then there's all my stuff. So guys, this is how to use VeraCrypt on Linux. It's a complicated process, I know, but it's worth it, especially if you need to protect your data. Please check the description for an in-depth article. It's a little bit of a companion piece as usual. You know, we, we like to, uh, to do these together so that you guys can get the most information possible. This is Derek, as you know, and I will see you next time.